Hi, my name is Samir, and my firm, uh, Digital Strategies, uh, helps nonprofits and small businesses use technology more effectively, um, mainly through better data management, um, understanding how to use online channels like websites and social media. Um, I've been working with a lot of nonprofits, uh, first as a volunteer uh, for a while as, a, as an employee at TechSoup last year, and for the last few months um, through my firm uh, to understand how to pull together all of the online information that they want to manage both for internal operations and for effectively communicating uh, their mission and their message to their constituents. So in my workshop today we will be looking at how you can incorporate technology into the design of service delivery at a nonprofit. Um, there's lots of ways in which a nonprofit can use technology obviously. Um, you could use it to manage internal operations, you can use it to put out communications about um, the work that the nonprofit is doing and the, the area that we'll try to focus on is how you use it to actually engage with your constituents and provide them services. Um, a lot of nonprofits um, work around providing services to uh, people in the community. It could be around um, organizing people, it could be around actually having them get to the website, sign up for um, uh, specific programs and so on. And what is the best way to think about how you use technology to do that? Um, so that's what we'll be focusing on. Uh, the overall principle that I'll be trying to um, you know, start up a discussion about is how you switch from being tool-centric in your use of technology to being data and people-centric. Um, the idea being that what really matters in your mission is the data that you are managing and the people who are generating that data or the, or the data that you're generating about people. Um, and the tools that you use um, might be something you uh, do as an experiment, as a prototype. Um, the tools frequently become obsolete and change a lot. And so in order to be able to navigate this landscape, it's very important to first think about how people are going to interact with them and what sort of data they're going to exchange. And that forms a more constant backdrop which represents your mission and which represents the, the work that you're doing. Um, a, so it gives you a sense of, of stability against which you can decide how do I switch out the technology, do I use something new, when, you know, how do I deal with things becoming obsolete and so on. And so that's sort of the area that we'll be focusing on. Um, a couple of tips that um, I hope to leave the audience with is if you're the person in charge of the technology then make sure that you are working to identify, um, to empower and also reward people that are going to be early adopters of your technology both inside and outside the organization. Um, and if you're the person that is in charge of investing in the technology then make sure that you identify and empower and definitely reward the person who's in charge of actually doing it because it's, it's a pretty hard job um, and it's very important for the success of the tool not so much to pick the right tool, but to make sure that the person who's managing it and who's, who's actually operating it um, is, is incentivized to do so. So those are a couple of uh, issues that we'll definitely look at. Um, I think there are a lot of great resources on the on the internet, um, as there are for pretty much everything. Um, I would encourage people to look at uh, the topics of design thinking and human-centered design as a couple of uh, uh, topics to search for. Um, I know that the Stanford Social Innovation Review magazine has uh, published a lot of great articles. Um, IDEO, I-D-E-O dot O-R-G is a great design firm that has done a lot of work in international development using some of these ideas. Um, I am from California, so um, I'm aware of a, a firm in, in the San Francisco Bay Area called Aspiration Technology, which does a lot of great work in terms of helping Nonprofit organizations understand what is the, how, how do you translate um, the work that you do into understanding how it creates interactions um, and how, do, how does that then become a good technology tool and how do you manage that. So that's another resource um, available, um, I guess more for people that, that are in California, but I know that Aspiration does work with um, people outside of California as well.